What's going on my Sunshine Good Nights? It's the Sunshine Man here. So this is my review of Monday Night Raw for the 3rd of November 1997. This show was in Hershey, Pennsylvania, home of chocolate. And this is the final Raw before Survivor Series. It starts with Vince McMahon in his final Monday Night Raw as the head play-by-play -play guy. Wow, we're getting the close of the end of the pre-Mr. McMahon Monday Night Raw era before Vince became this heel authority figure and first of many memories for the next 25 years. Wow. Yeah. 25 years of Mr. McMahon. Uh, of him, you know, doing the Kiss My Ass Club, cheating on Linda McMahon with Trish Stratus, beating up Shane, beating up Stephanie. Oh, let me think. Um... Hornswoggle becoming Vince McMahon's son. Um, I think Vince McMahon versus God, insulting Jim Ross, um, beating up Zach Gowan. Wow, <laughs> this is this. Uh, was it Pat McAfee in his final match at WrestleMania 38 of this year? There's a lot of memories of Mr. McMahon for good. And bad, mostly bad. Anyway, so let's talk about this role. So he's interviewing Stone Cold Steve Austin because he's facing Owen Hart for the Intercontinental Championship at Survivor Series. So Austin, I'm going to keep it short and simple. Um, Austin says he's pissed off of Owen, drop him on his head at SummerSlam. For months, he's sitting on his couch, doing, he's supposed to be doing the things he's supposed to do. And at Survivor Series, this is not a wrestling match. This is payback for Owen Hart when you're dropping Stone Cold Steve Austin on his head and nearly paralyze him. It means I'm going to kick your ass. And he's um, basically, Finn says, you ticked everybody off. Take everybody off. That's weak. I, hate it. I know you can't say piss. I know it means you piss people off. Austin said I piss a lot of people off. You know. The Heart Foundation, he brings up the Heart Foundation, you pissed off or ticked off, and the Nation of Domination ticked off. So, anyway, um, you ticked off. And also, show the footage of him going involved, you know, like Stone Cold Stunner, Ahmed Johnson. So, it, yeah, he got towards Ahmed Johnson. He said, like, you know, he, he's there for the wrong place at the wrong time, the Nation, the wrong place at the wrong time because he's got Owen. On his back, you know, he wants to beat his ass, you know, in Austin's words, a can of wood pass to get his um, intercontinental towel back. So he said, like, I have no business with you. We're not going to be friends. Oh, no. I think he said no problems with you. But um, when you get in the ring with Stone Cold and you are getting you in the ring with you, you you're still going to get your ass kicked, plain and simple. And then out comes Armin Johnson wearing his street clothes. I think he's wearing a red jumper or sweater. You know, um, he's wearing like a... The Americans call it fanny pack, but he's wearing like a bum, a bum bag and jeans. Um, anyway, so... Armin Johnson, he said like he used to respect for me. Um, I No, he, he said he used to respect for Austin. You're in his zone, I'm going to kick your ass. He springs up, I used to be in the streets. Um, I'm, I guess what he's saying, because he's not really a good talker, man. That's the problem with Armand Johnson's push. He's trying to push him to be the next top star of the company. He's always getting injured, and then the next thing, he's not really a good talker. So, anyway, so he challenged uh, Austin to a match. He, and I think it's the first time that he did, like, give me the hell yeah. He said, you know, give me the hell yeah. If he wants to see Stone Cold kick, whooping, um, <laughs> whooping, um, Armin Johnson's asking me, hell yeah, hell yeah, and, you know, and the match is settled, so we'll get to that part uh, later on, so, I forgot to mention this, Bret Hart's not on this show, you know, not on the show, um, that means the Raw from the 27th of October of the previous week was basically Bret's last Raw until 2010, until he made his triumphant return to the WWE, in the first Raw 2010. Wow. It's really sad. Because yeah. Like. This is like. You could say. End of an era. Like. You had. Um, Brett's final Raw. 
uh, until 2010, you know, and, you know, Finn's at final role as a commentator before he become this heel character for the next 25 years. So, anyway, um, let's talk about the first match of the night. So, the first match of the night, um, this is the first quarterfinal match of the Light Heavyweight Championship Tournament. Uh, we got Al, was it Ugalia? Sorry, I can't butcher this guy's name, can't pronounce his name properly. Taking on Super Luca, was it Super Loco? Sorry, Super Loco. I think, I don't know if that's super crazy or not. Um, this is shit. On paper, I thought this is going to be a good match, you know. Way better than the midgets. Um, they produced, we oh, uh, recently, not recently, but like a few weeks prior or a few months prior or one or two months, you know, show me like midget matches. You know, they're not bad matches, but it didn't really serve a purpose. But I thought this like going to be a really good uh, Lucha Libre match. But it is, but it was botches. There was a lot of botches, like Super Loco. He was so botchy, man. I think the announcers bring up that he was um, 19, almost 20. Wow, you know. Uh, one more, I think what, like, he was going for like a move. He kind of fucked up. Yeah, he fucked up so many moves. Um, I think he was going like a springboard submission hole. He couldn't get him up. You know, yeah, it was so, it's bad for him. You know, you had, uh, I think you had, um, yeah, you had uh, Brian Christopher on commentary. Um, laughing, you know, I think they did some daddy jokes, you know, they never believe, Lola, Lola on TV will never face the fact that, um, Brian Christopher is his son, everyone knows Brian Christopher is the son of Jerry the King Lola, so anyway, so, yeah, it was botchy, um, I think he was going for like a spinning heel kick, he missed it, on the ropes, trying to hit, um, Alugera on the, I think it was on the ropes, but, um, you missed it. Um. Anyway, so but that he was very botchy, botchy, super loca, uh, loco. I keep saying local. I mean loco. My apologies. So anyway, I think it was Alugella got the victory. Um. Hit the um. He hit the um. Uh, a frog splash, but he didn't look, hit it properly. You know, he hit. He kind of landed on on super loco's face, but not in the chest and stomach area. I said to myself, "Holy shit." Hope he's not broke his face, so yeah, it was botchy. It, it could be a good match, but it was bogged down with botches. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, so the next segment, um, also they I think they aired off the Jeff Jarrett interview. Um, maybe it's the next the next week, the Raw After Survivor series. Uh, anyway, I forgot the you know, the brought says so still to come, they're gonna show you the Jeff Jarrett interview, but we didn't. Anyway, so the next segment we got Jim Ross interviewing Marlena and Goldus. There's a lot to talk about, I'm trying to keep to the key points, otherwise this is going to be a like very long review, I'm trying to keep it like very minimum, like I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. Anyway, so uh, Goldust, Dustin Rhodes, he was not pleased of Marlena. Marlena says, you know, for a month, you know, referring to he was, she, she was Pillman's assistant, like for, for 30 days after... Uh, Goldos lost the match against Pillman at Clan Zero. He said the most two, I missed she said it missed the two most important uh, persons in her life, her daughter Dakota and Goldas, you know, like people throw ugly stuff. I, ru I run to Golda uh, Dustin and tell him all of them thought tell him any anything. So Goldas says, you know, I never like I never liked you. You know, my dad, he, I think he said that he dad hates you. The last time, last time I did an interview, I cried for my dad. I, I remember that, you know, that was months ago I reviewed that, that raw. I think it was around the, I think it was April time. And he's crying like, he just, uh, you know, Dusty died. I know, I know he died in 2015, but he was working in WCW at the time, so he never liked me. You know, he, say, he said to uh, Marlena or Terry, that he treats him like a dog every time, you know, you know, I do a mistake or lack of your vision, something like that, you know, you scorn me. I'm trying to keep it short and simple, guys, otherwise it's going to be very long. You can tell, like, he wants to be doing things on his own, he's doing it for him, I meet someone, 
Um, I never liked you for the past seven years. Why? You know, you think for a month I was at home being a mom, being a great mom, being a great dad, being a great husband, pl playing mom. I don't know. I think you said, don't know what you doing. Referring to him and uh, her and Pillman. Um, I'm trying to keep it short and simple. Like you said, she's he said that's bullshit. So, uh, Marlena is crying. You know. Because seeing her husband speaking the truth, being nasty towards her. And anyway, so he grabbed the arm. He basically removed his ring, says, you can take you can take this ring, take your marriage, take Marlena, and shove it up your ass. I'm done with your shit. And this has become, this is the end of Dustin Rhodes as Goldust for until 1998 and 99. I think it was in WCW a bit in 98. I don't know he was around 99 until when WCW went out of business in 2001. But um, I think the reason why they did this because I think the original plans, I don't know, I said in my review of Bad Blood, we don't know what's the original plans, what's the, the original playoff of this rivalry between Goldust and Brian Pillman. It was getting really good, it's getting really personal. I think that post the segment is, you know, you know dump, dumping Marlena. And Terry Reynolds. Um, you can tell like they end up. I think they're dropping them. I think this is the start of Terry, or which has become Terry instead of Marlena. They're dropping the Marlena name. Um, she will remain Terry until she left the company in two. I think it was two thousand four, two thousand five. I think it was two thousand five. Terry left the company. She never came back to the company ever since. I think. Um, anyway, so seeing Goldust just basically dump them. That's dumping Marlena. Ending the marriage. I know. Was, I think that's a work shoot promo that uh, Dustin Rhodes or Goldust done because this is very personal. I know it's a work shoot, but he really went personal. And I really like it. Um, seeing Marlena crying. You know, I know they got relative got divorced in later in later years. You know, I don't know what year they got divorced for real, but yeah, it's really good. It was really emotional. For, you know, for Marlena, you know, she didn't really make, she didn't really actually don't want to have sex with Pillman. Pillman made her, you know, it's just what it is. So, yeah, Goldust will become the formerly known as Goldust. He ended up like, I think on one Raw, he dressed up like Dusty Rhodes and like a bit of an identity crisis. So, it's just what it is. Um, anyway, um, Let's move on to the next segment. Um, or originally, or the next match. So anyway, so yeah, um, originally it was supposed to be wow. The, originally it was supposed to be Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Ahmed Johnson, but um, he got uh, you know Ahmed Johnson got attacked by Kane. Kane chokeslam uh, Ahmed Johnson and hit him with a Tombstone Power Driver. Um, out comes Mankind hitting Kane with a with a pipe. You can tell it's a real uh, fake pipe. It's because those pipes are very heavy. You're not gonna actually crack in someone in the head with a lit with a blunt instrument. You'll probably be brain damaged. You know, seriously, seriously injured, injured, like serious injured, um, brain damage or or de or dead. So it was it looks fake, but anyway, you got. Uh, got up, yeah, it was just felt really set up, really built, firming up their match going to Survivor Series between Mankind and um, Kane. So anyway, then Austin came out, says like, you know, he, I think Armand Johnson basically, he said he took it easy, otherwise I give him the real can of whoop ass and serve him, it, serve it with a spoon. He basically says. Challenge, challenge other people to face him. Out come the nation. One nation member trying to trying to confront, uh, confront Stone Cold is Karma, the future Godfather. Uh, the nation also got attacked. I think they got attacked by the LOD. And Austin hit Karma Mustafa with the Stone Cold Stunner. That was it. No Owen on the show. This build. I know it's like leading up to SummerSlam. But it's just like very lackluster. You know, of this chapter. Well, I'll get to that on reviewing Survivor Series. Um. Anyway, so you know, I'm talking about ninety seven. By the way, I mean, 
So anyway, uh, moving on to the next segment. So the next segment we got Michael Cole interviewing um, Shawn Michaels and DJ X. Um, outcomes ravishing Rick Rude. He called the fans. Or was it Philadelphia? Or was it Philly or Pennsylvania pissants? Wow. Yeah, Pennsylvania pissants. Anyway, um, and this was you can tell this Rick Rude's second to last Monday Night Raw. His final Raw will be on the um. I think it was on the 11th, the Raw after Survivor Series. We'll get to that next time. So anyway, so out comes DX, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, China. Um, basically, Michael Cole interviewing Shawn Michaels about the match. He got involved in the Ken Shamrock, Bret Hart match from the previous week. And then Shawn kissed Triple H. He got really got uh, like a shot pop and end up kissing, he ended up kissing China. He's basically teasing the fans that he's gay, but Sean's not gay. He's got wives, he's got kids, he's got kids. You know, see him kissing uh, Triple H and kissing China because at the time China was in his relationship with Triple H, so that was uh, that was fine. Here's a fun fact, you know. I think it was some kayfabe interview or kayfabe, not kayfabe documentary. My apologies. That um, in this time period around May 7, 98, Triple H and Shawn Michaels really hate each other. You know, because Sean was acting like an asshole outside of, you know, off camera. He was acting like an asshole. And, um, you know, the friends right now, you know, you know, I'm just like, I've heard you know, fun facts, you know, he was an asshole. You know, they were, they were not friends, you know, back in the late 90s, you know, compared to, you know, until they, they, they made, they made, made up and then, you know, the friends to this day. So it's a bit of a fun trivia. So anyway, so. Triple H on, on uh, yeah, Triple H uh, grabbed the mic from Michael Cole, said like, DX come out week in, was it every week, or week in, week out, or something like that. And the fans were chanting faggots towards Triple H, and, and Triple H says, uh, drop it, or stop it. <laughs> faggot chants, you know. You're not going to see faggot chants in today's professional wrestling world. Or maybe in the indies, but not in mainstream professional wrestling company. Anyway, so, um, he basically says, we give you a hard time, you, you know, you're doing your job, you know, we ran out of serial announcers, you got China on her knees, and she likes pushing Michael Cole, and he rolled over China's back, and really funny, wow, Michael Cole and China are nearly the same height, you know, yeah, China is like, they say like, she's six feet tall, but in reality, she's only 5'10", and Michael Cole's 5'9", wow, it's like, Great example, um, Nia Jax and Enzo Amore, they're both nearly the same height, you know, um, I think Enzo's skinny, Nia's about, you know, she's fat, you know, she's like heavy. Anyway, um, so Shawn Michaels says he's once again putting himself over, he's the showstopper of the main event, the icon, he step, he step it further, he's almost calling him the wrestling god, but instead Triple H stopped it. And he says, to be a god, you have to be older than the god. To be a god, you got to be. He brings up like Pontius Pilate making the turn. You got a main event at Colosseum before the walls crashing down. You have to able to walk on water to make sure able people watch Age of the Cage. Referring, I'm guessing it's referring to the steel cage match at Howling Havoc between Hulk Hogan and Roddy Piper. That was fucking stupid. You know, like, it was, you know, Hogan and Piper were so past his prime, Savage did that dive, and also you got fake stings interfering. You know, I compare it to the John Cena Miz, that was the John Cena Miz, that was just setting up the John Cena Rock match at WrestleMania 28. That match was just setting up Hogan and Sting for that year's Starcade. and next month, we'll get, next month, I will review, um, Starcade 97. I need to review some, I need to review some WCW stuff, you know, it's been months. The last WCW show I reviewed was, I think it was Bash of the Beach, um, 1998, I think. Yeah, 1998. Anyway, so let's get back to it. So, so anyway, um, Sean, you know, Sean said he's got two things. Like, number one, next week he's going to come to the ring naked. And Vince says he's he's going too far. You can tell in Vince's, Vince's face, you can tell he doesn't really... Um, like the whole DX stuff, if you watch Triple X's documentary, Die Kingdom Come, he really don't like this thing with um, DX 
And also, he doesn't like the whole China thing, because if you if you watch the documentary, that um, China almost went to WCW because of Kevin Nash, and I think the like um, I think the only person behind the scenes liked the whole idea was Shane McMahon. You know, that's another story for another time. So, yeah, Sean says he's gonna like come in, come into the ring naked. And also challenge, basically challenge the world most dangerous man next week. Just, you know, he said like, to take on the world's most dangerous man, Ken Sharp, to show the world most dangerous man. That's a bit contradictual and makes no sense. So, anyway, so Triple H says the X won the shot here. He basically, like, called out Sergeant Slaughter to make the match. Then out comes Sergeant Slaughter. You know, you know Triple H called, uh, called Slaughter Chin. <laughs> he called him Chin because he's a massive chin. And Sean Minikin, like, that's an order. You know, anyway, so. And also, Triple H, and Sh you can see the pictures right now. Triple H and Shawn Michaels wearing, like, right helmets because uh, every time Slaughter shouts, they get spit on him. Yeah, it was kind of like, like take, it's basically they're taking the piss out of Sergeant Slaughter. It's kind of funny. And also, you know, you, uh, also he said like he's not gonna, uh, yeah, he said he's gonna face Ken Shut Up but n tonight, so instead of getting pissed off, they're just joking around, you know. You can tell the act was getting over at this moment in time. They're not getting super over. They got super over in 1998, but um, there's one guy holding the sign says DX with the X on it. You can tell it's slowly growing on people that, um, wow. They are, they are assholes, but at the same time, they could be very entertaining, so. I think Sean says, um, used to straight, used to straight, straighten out people in the army. This, this is the World Wrestling Federation. I, you know, I'm going to straight you, you, um, and this is, uh, I, I'm Sean Michaels, you can't tell me what to do. Something like that, you know, he's not joking, he's just joking around, so. We'll get to the main event, um, in the end, so. Uh, the next match, we've got Mark Merrow taking on Savio Vega. Before that, you had Mark Merrow getting pissed off because Sable, he's, I think she was getting dressed in her locker room. And then Merrow basically forced her to get out of the locker room. And basically, he called the um, cameraman Fat Boy. Not on the same level as Ric Flair, saying, you shit up, Fat Boy. Um, you can tell, like, at this moment in time, you can tell, like, Mark Merrow is leaning heel. And I'll get to more of that shortly. So anyway, the match between Mark Merrow and Savio Vega, the leader of Los Puiquas, it was um it was okay. It was more showcasing Mark Merrow. Um, in the end, Mark Merrow low blow Savio Vega. He's supposed to be a baby face, but um anyway, so he low blows Savio Vega, hit the TKO for the victory, and then afterwards, Michael Cole came out trying to interview um Sable. But uh, Mero got pissed off, says he wants to interview a superstar next week, interview me, and that was it. So, and I think, like, Sable's waving the fans, and Mero stopped him, like, holding her hand. Yeah, this is the start of the whole Mark Mero Sable storyline when Sable's getting more of the attention, um, and Mero's getting pissed off and jealous. And this was the beginning of the end of Mark Mero. You know, people say he was never the same after the knee injury. I think they're right, but in ring wise, he still can go. But I think as a character, you know, again, debunked, you know, seeing the, you know, bringing his actual wife to the company, and he, you know, she's getting more of the attention than him. That's a it really done Mark Merrow, you know, because he's a good worker, man. So anyway, let's move on to, in my opinion, this is the worst match of the night. Uh, so we got the um, this is a dark color match. We got the British Bulldog David Boy Smith with Jim the Anvil Nineheart. I think this is the raw appearance. This is the raw debut of, um, I think, um, I think they end up going back to ECW. We got Doug Furness and Phil Lafon. Um, yeah, um, Bulldog was going after the fan because he's waving the Canadian flag. Yeah, they're doing the whole USA Canada thing. What the fuck? I think the whole USA Canada thing was really. I think the ship has sailed. You know, it's. I'll get to more of that when I review Survivor Series '97. So, uh, the match sucked. It sucked, and you have to touch all four corners. I never liked it. Never liked the whole 
strap matches, you have to put all four corners. I like dog collar matches, you have to whip each other, win by pinfall submission, you know, you know, get that like brawling, not knocking down brawl type of thing, but touching the ball, all four corners, and when someone like did a, did a power move, you have, you have to start it all over again, it's stupid, it gets boring, it's repetitive, too old immediately. Um, anyway, you got like, you had, um, yeah, you had Nine Hard, Lafon, and Furnace being down feeder. And also, you had Michael Cole, you know, during this match, you know, interfering Lafon and Furnace. You know, why you came back to the um, company representing Team Canada. I think it was Furnace says, I'm from, I'm from, I'm already from Canada, you idiots. And, you know, I think like with Doug Furnace says, you know, oh, you know, talking Lafon to the United States of America. You know, and then we nearly got caught, nearly, nearly got killed in the car crash. You know, we're getting backlash, blah, blah, blah. Don't want to get into it. What? I don't get it, man. Anyway, so, in the end, Vader got the victory. Afterwards, the heels being down, Vader. And then, and now we've got the date, the WWF <laughs> debut of Steve Blackman. Blackman, you know, and this was a complete clusterfuck as well. You know, you, you people think it's a, a fan in the, um, in the corner, but instead, instead of like, Blackman and Vader, you know, beating down the baby faces and clear the ring. No, you had um, Vader, Shield, Blackman, and the heels beating down. What the fuck is that? Sorry about my language, man. What the what the heck is that? So, moving on. Moving on, pal. So, <laughs> so anyway, so the next match we got um, yeah, we got the New Age Outlaws. Not officially called New Age Outlaws yet, but on, for the for these reviews, I'm just gonna call them New Age Outlaws. We've got the Road Dog Jesse James, and Badass Billy Gunn taking on two members represent most of the week was. That is Jose and Jesus. Wow, match did not give... No one gives a shit. No one cared. People they've got like a pin drop. And also the, ch the chanting faggots towards the New Age Outlaws. Um, like I say, you're not going to see fans chanting faggots in today's professional wrestling products, whether it's WWE or AEW. Um, anyway, so in the end, New H L Laws got the victory, and that was it. Um, uh, so it was just, it's just what it is. It's more point over the New H L Laws, getting them over, and let's move on to the main event. So in the main event, we got the Heartbreak Kid Shawn Michaels with Triple H, China, Rick Rude in in in, the, in Shawn Michaels' corner. Taking on the world's most dangerous man, Ken Shamrock. I think the match was match of the night for me. This was a good match. This is the only good match of the show. But that's not saying too much. You know, it, got, it was bogged down with interference by China and Triple H. You know, like one more of the match. This is a funny spot. Anyway, so, um, yeah, Shamrock, like, clashing both Shawn Michaels and Triple H's heads together. That was kind of funny. Yeah, China got involved. Triple H got involved. Really bogged bog, bog it down, but I really like it. You know, Shamrock hit the fisherman suplex. Um, he, in the end, um, locked the ankle lock onto Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels tapping out, but China, or Triple H, I think it was China, um, distracting the referee. Outcomes, um, yeah, outcomes, um, ravishing Rick Rude. Um, hitting, you know, hitting Ken Shamrock in, in the back with the briefcase without the referee, referee noticing. Triple H hit Shamrock. Afterwards, that match ended in disqualification. Afterwards, they beat down Ken Shamrock. In the end, Triple H hit the pedigree onto Ken Shamrock on the brick case to end this raw. So, anyway, so I, I give it a 4 out of 10. This is not a good raw, man. First off, they're missing the star powers. Yeah, you got Austin, DX. And that's it. Austin, DX. Um, besides that, no Bret Hart, no Owen Hart, no members of the nation. Yeah, yeah, you got Kane and Mankind, but and also no Undertaker. Yeah, no Undertaker. Um, for the second week of the Raw, Undertaker. He wasn't. Here's the fun fact: Survivor Series '97 was the first Survivor Series since 1989 without the Undertaker because Undertaker, since his debut in 1990, appeared in 1990, 91. I think it was 92, 93, 94. I think 95, 96, um. Yeah, he put in 1998 the following year, but um, yeah, I think that's the, I I thought I think I thought he took the time off um for the rest of the year, but instead he wrestled at in your house, or was it DX in your house in December? That's a 
you have to wait until next month when I review that uh, show. But yeah, I think at the time they got no plans for him. You, you, I think he's given given Undertaker like a pay per view off because he's wrestled throughout the whole the whole of nineteen ninety seven, folks. Royal Rumble, be in the Rumble match, the Fatal Four Way at the Final Four pay per view, WrestleMania, Cold Day in Hell, Revenge of the Taker. Yeah, Revenge of the Taker, Cold Day in Hell, King of the Ring, Canadian Stampede, SummerSlam, Grand Zero, One Night Only, Bad Blood. Yeah. It's, this, you know, Survivor Series is the only paper that The Undertaker never wrestles. Wow, it's for the best, man, so. Uh, anyway, the only match in the good for me has to be shot, Kent, mostly Shamrock and Michaels. They end up fighting, yeah, they end up fighting at the December In Your House show. That's, you have to wait until next month, like I said, so. Some matches were bogged down with, it's just filler, completely filler. I like the Dustin Rhodes, Marlena segment. And that was it, DX was entertaining, but besides that, not really a good final Raw to end, you know, final go on show before the pay-per-view. It's just what it is. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed my review of Monday Night Raw for the 3rd of November, 1997. Maybe you thought it's the below. Smash like button. Click the bell. And subscribe to the Central Man Network on YouTube. Be part of the Central Unit for more wrestling videos and more. And this is the Central Man Official sign out. Check you later, folks.